So in this video, let us discuss about yet another algorithm for regression, which is known as multiple linear regression. Now this is very much similar to simple linear regression, with the difference that in this case we have more than one predictor or input variable, which of course are continuous as well as an output variable, which is also continuous. So the multiple linear regression, the equation for multiple linear regression can be represented as y is equals to m0 plus m1x1 plus m2x2 plus so on mnxn. It is better than simple linear regression because it takes into account other predictors or input variables as well to predict for the output variable. So you are taking more than one input variable to predict for your output variable. Now the next thing that arises is how we can estimate the coefficients or parameters of our equation which are m0, m1, m2, mn. So if we get the predicted output variable as y cap, so suppose the predicted output variable is y cap, then using multiple linear regression we can make use of estimated parameters which are m0 cap, m1 cap and so on and we can say y cap is equals to m0 cap plus m1 cap x1 plus m2 cap x2 and so on to mn cap xn. We learn about residual sum of squares for computing the parameters of our simple linear regression model in the previous video but in this video since we are dealing with n such coefficients pertaining to multiple linear regression it is very difficult to comprehend that in terms of an equation because it requires high computation power. So here comes another concept that comes to our rescue which is known as gradient descent approach. So computing these parameters using multiple linear regression is not going to be an easy task because we don't know beforehand how many input variable we have and then you will have to find all such coefficients that will require high computation on your side. So let us discuss about yet another topic which is gradient descent. Gradient descent algorithm so if you can recall from the video simple linear regression our main goal in that video was to find out the values of m0 and m1 coefficients of our model in order to get the minimized sum of squares of residual values if you didn't check that video, it is highly recommended to go over that complete video before watching this video. And we know that RSS is a function of coefficients of our model, which are m0 and m1, m0 and m1, in case of simple linear regression model. This we know, we had discussed this in the previous videos. So varying the values of m0 and m1 will change the value of RSS for your model. And you can see this it is equivalent to the cost function that means lower the value of RSS or you can see the error component the lower is the cost of your model. Now gradient descent is an optimization technique to basically vary the coefficients values in order to minimize or you can say optimize the value of the cost function which in this case is RSS. So let me write this optimization technique to vary the values of coefficients in order to minimize your cost function okay so we have to minimize this cost function which is RSS so the equation for gradient descent which is an optimization technique uh, can be written something like this for simple linear regression so m j so any instance a jth instance m j minus k into so it is multiplication partial derivative of rss m0 m1 divided by so we are taking the partial derivative with respect to mj okay so this is our equation for gradient descent for simple linear regression where j belongs to 0 comma 1 
so j belongs to 0 comma 1 now let us discuss how gradient descent works using a very simple example for this example let us assume we just want to estimate just a single parameter so i'm est uh, i'm interested in estimating the value for m naught a single parameter the most simple case that i can think of right now to explain this concept so using just this parameter m naught i want to minimize or optimize the value of rss as much as possible so let us plot the m naught parameter along the x axis and rss m naught along the y axis to visualize what we are doing so m naught along the x axis and rss so your cost function or residual sum of squares for just a single parameter so, so we are trying to find out for which value of m naught will rss value be minimum now let us assume that the shape of curve for the equation of rss is a parabola or you can say a second degree curve for now let us take a parabola so in general in mathematics the equation for parabola is y squared is equals to 4ax and you can learn about this in a separate video or i can refer you a link in which you can read more about second degree equation curves the link for that article can be found down below so our main goal is to find the minimum optimal value for rss which is the rss minimum in this case so this is our optimal value that we are targeting rss minimum and let us say that the value of coefficient for which we are getting the minimum value of rss be m naught cap so this is the value at which you're gonna get a minimum value of rss which is the optimal one and this is what we want to estimate now let us assume when you start the training process of your machine learning model the assumed value of m naught is say m naught initial so let the initial value be m naught initial which is m naught i i as a subscript okay which is say the initial value of m naught and let us say it is present somewhere around here at this point so we need to start from the initial value of m naught and we are targeting the optimal value which is m naught prime okay so m naught prime which is the optimal value where you can say we have the minimal value of rss so this will be your minimal value of rss that we want to target so what will happen is once you start the iterations of your training process we are going to successively get more values of m naught so you are going like this then you will go like this when your iterations are continuing in this manner you are gradually getting some values for m naught your new values of m naught will appear once you start with the training process and you want that you get to this value which is the target value where you get the minimal value of rss so we're going to successively get more values of m naught and gradually we will tend towards the value so gradually we are going in this fashion and we will tend to this value a value at which we will get the minimal value of rss which in this case is m naught prime and finally the algorithm will converge at this point where we will get the minimal value of rss for more complex regression techniques we can have tons of coefficients to determine but the gradient descent approach still remains the same but in those cases we will have to apply it on multiple coefficients along various dimensions instead of just one as in this case now let us see everything using the equation that we had discussed for simple linear regression in case of gradient descent now since we only consider one parameter m naught let us write the equation for this single parameter which is m naught m naught minus k times the partial derivative rss m naught upon with respect to m naught so i'm taking the partial derivative of rss m naught with respect to m naught multiply that with k and we're subtracting the value that we get from m naught and this way we will get a new value for m naught so let us see how the iterations of our training process for our training data are actually happening so from the initial value of m naught which is m naught i to the final converged value which is m naught prime where we get the minimum value of rss which is rss min 
and also one thing you should take a note of is that k is known as the learning rate learning rate so k is your learning rate and the partial derivative that we are having is known as the gradient and that is why the algorithm is known as gradient descent so the gradient determines the direction in which your m0 should basically move in the graph now as you start moving from the initial value which is m0 i towards the point where we get the optimal value of m0 which is m0 prime you can see that the slope of a tangent to the curve so if i draw a tangent to the curve like this then we are gradually moving to more values of m0 when our iterations are going on so if i take the tangent here then we are gradually moving to this position of the curve and you can see we can draw any number of tangents to the curve so you can see that the slope of tangent to the curve at the point that we covered till here is negative okay the slope is negative means the angle that the line or the tangent will make with the x axis is greater than 90 degree and uh, you know that slope is tan of theta okay so let me tell you the simple concept if the angle is basically lying in your second quadrant and it makes an angle of theta with the x axis and theta is greater than 90 degree so the slope is definitely negative because m is tan theta and tan theta when the theta angle is greater than 90 degree it will be negative so your slope is negative okay the slope of the tangent to the curve at the points that we covered till here is negative okay and if you move away from the optimal point so at the optimal point your tangent will be parallel to the x-axis so let me zoom this picture in another diagram so consider the same curve and at this point suppose this is your x-axis and here's your y-axis you can see at this point the tangent is parallel to the x-axis so in this case your angle that the tangent is making with the x-axis is zero so slope will be zero at this point okay at the optimal point the case where you are getting the optimal value of rss is where the slope value will be uh, zero so now from this point onwards if we move away from the optimal point to the right the slope of the tangent will gradually keep on increasing like this if say you are at this point then if you draw a tangent at this point you can see the slope is increasing okay because now our angle will be somewhat like this so it will lie in the first quadrant and therefore tan theta will be positive so your slope will be positive okay so if the slope of the tangent to the curve is negative as you can see then by equation you can see that m0 will move to the right okay because this thing will be negative in case your slope is negative which is the gradient and if the gradient is negative then you can say so case one so if the slope of the tangent to the curve is negative as you can see then by the equation you can see that m0 will move to the right in that case what will happen is m0 is m0 minus the learning rate into the slope is negative uh, till here at till the point of convergence at the point of convergence you have a slope of zero and after that the slope is gradually increasing as you can see so before reaching the optimal point the slope is negative so the gradient is negative and therefore the new value of m0 will come out to be positive or it will be greater so m0 plus something that is positive okay so this means that your m0 will move to the right and if the slope of tangent to the curve is positive at some point like at this point you have the slope as positive then m0 will move towards left for that case what will happen is that case 2 so in that case what will happen is m0 m0 minus k into if your slope is positive so just after this point you will have positive thing so it will be m0 minus or you can say plus and something negative that means in that case you will the m0 will be moving to the left okay 
So M0 will move towards left. So this is how this gradient is determining the direction in which your M0 should move. Now what is the rule of K in this equation? K is known as the learning rate. If K is very large, so if this K is very large, then what can happen is that M0 might not converge at the point of convergence, which is this point, where the minimum value of RSS is found. So it can deflect from that point and can iteratively shift from the optimal point or you can say it can diverge in that case and had the learning rate k been too low then it will take a lot of time to basically converge to the optimal point because in that case what will happen is say suppose you're starting from this point and your learning rate is uh, very slow then it will take a lot of time for getting new values of m0 and the iterations will be huge so it will take a lot of time to reach to the optimal point and will require a large computation power. So making an equilibrium value of k is necessary to govern this process. So it will basically take a lot of time to basically converge to the optimal point where we can find the minimal value of RSS. So to conclude we have to control the rate at which M0 should move. For that, we cannot have a too large or a too small value of k or the learning rate. And also our gradient becomes zero at this point. So when your gradient is zero at the point of convergence, we can say that we have converged to the optimal point. So for that case, this will get reduced to zero. Okay. And in the case three, m0 value will come out to be m0 minus k into your gradient is zero. So you will get M0, which is the converged value or the optimal value of RSS or the optimal value of M0 at which you get the minimal value of RSS. Let me mark down the regions. I will draw a dotted line here vertically. The curve that is to the left of this line uh, represents case one. Okay, so I will say case one. Where your slope value or the gradient value is negative. Okay. And to the right of this dotted line, we have the case 2, where your gradient is gradually increasing. So you are getting more positive value of your gradient, which is this partial derivative. And therefore, this thing is coming out to be negative and your M0 is moving to the left. And in the above case, in the case 1, it is moving to the right. Because in case 1, your gradient is negative and this negative and this negative becomes positive. So M0 will move towards the right. Okay. So it is going to target an optimal value of RSS. And if somehow your M0 overshoots, then this case will arise. It will basically force M0 to go to this optimal point like this. So we have to target this point where we get the optimal value of RSS. And once your gradient is zero, you can say we have converged to the optimal point where we have the minimal value of RSS. So this was all about the video on introduction to multiple linear regression and the gradient descent algorithm. So if you like the video, do give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the very next video. Don't forget to share the video with your friends and colleagues who want to learn machine learning and other technologies. Bring them to the channel. So let's catch up in the next video.